Presented by Botano, Nick Alberga, and Jay Rosso back together. Can you believe it, Rosie? A week from now, we start our Odyssey, season number two of Leafs Morning Take at 11 a.m. Eastern Time here on the Leafs Nation YouTube page. How excited are you, bud? I am pretty excited. We're in, uh, it's nice having camp right now, and I've got no nerves or jitters or anything like that. I can sit back and wait for that camp to be over, preseason to be over. My eyes are on the prize. Next week, we're going live, baby. I'm just driving a Monday coffee into me right now, trying to trying to keep this ship on the on the straight and narrow. I wonder how many coffees the Kelsey family are drinking on this on this Monday, because we're we're ahead of the times here at Leafs Morning Take. We talked about this last week, and then all of a sudden, Taylor Swift shows up to Arrowhead on Sunday against the Bears, and she throws out a "Let's fucking go" when it's thirty-four nothing, and Travis Kelsey gets a touchdown to make it forty-one nothing. Uh, a bit tone deaf, I think. Did she LFG that you you're a, yeah. you're a lip reader? Yeah, That's pretty easy to pick up. Yeah, I guess we broke that news on on Leafs Morning Take, didn't we? I mean, the world really, took no. notice. No, no I still a- don't. I still could give two rips about who Taylor is dating, even though she's an insane superstar. But yeah. I just still don't get like, what is the point of dating each other? You're, are you ever going to see each other? Like, what's the point? And back to my original point: who cares? I like it. At the Leafs Nation 401, you can subscribe here on YouTube. Uh, Leafs Morning Take, wherever you find your podcasts as well. Let's jump into things. So the Leafs, the preseason game's underway. They lose to Ottawa on Sunday. Again, who cares? But Nylander, Nyes, Riley, Hervin, and stood out. Uh, tough outing for Connor Timmins as he tries to gain a regular uh, spot in the lineup. That's going to be tough this year. He's probably the number seven as they enter the season. But we'll see what happens uh i i mean you played in this league well what's preseason truly like especially the first couple games are guys just sending it at night <laughs> at night like at the bars <laughs> yeah you sending it or what <laughs> no not really man you're you're getting back into the the flow of things you're getting back into the routine your body's getting used to you know contact yeah. uh you guys got bumps bruises it's always tough the trainers are scrambling around like crazy because you know, as hard as you go in the summertime and as much training as you do, you can't, you just can't emulate that full bore hit hockey, NHL speed, NHL physicality, and your body's adjusting to it. And it is kind of weird though, because there's the guys that are going absolutely full tilt. My life's on the line here trying to make the team. And then you got some veteran guys who are kind of not going through the motions, but making sure that the body isn't getting too much too fast. And then there's the superstars that are, you know, it doesn't really mean anything to them. Um, I'm always worried, you know, looking at it now as those big boys getting hurt by some meathead trying to run around and, and kill them and make their name or something. That doesn't happen as much that anymore, but it used to certainly be an issue. And I think they kept guys off the ice sometimes, but it's kind of a schmozzle. This time of year is just yeah. guys trying to find their way. Everyone's in a different boat. Guys are trying, fighting for their lives. Other guys couldn't care less about what's going on. And it's just a schmozzle. So it, it's, it's always a good feeling when you cut that roster down, you have your first team meeting saying, this is what we're going with boys. And then you're playing with real bullets. I'd say it's pretty similar to what transpired in my beer league hockey game on Sunday, where we showed up only to find out the rent to goalie and other team was not showing up. So we started the game. They had no goalie and, for anybody who's played shinny and there's no goalie, the my work ethic is not there to begin with in beer league hockey. You take a goalie out of the equation, like I, I would just dump and change. Like, I don't know. It just and I can only imagine at the NHL level, especially if you're, you know, a full time guy and you're making good coin and you have to go through the motions for six games. I think it's ridiculous. I get why they play six games. I think training camp is is way too long in terms of the number of games, but you want to see some of the smaller players, the the younger players, and I get that being in the lineup, but it's like We're going to get to a point, Rosie, where it's like, oh, my God, we still have a week and a half before the start of the season. October 11th is the opener, by the way. Yeah, it is long, man. I don't know. I remember playing like the six, seven um, preseason games. I can't remember what. I think Dangle might have said something about a stat when I made the team out of training camp on the Leafs. And I think I think it was like in eight in seven days, I fought five times. (laughs) Just trying to put my face on the map, but you're just out there just, and, and back then there was those, you know, we'd play Philadelphia a whole bunch of times. Right. And we'd play them in London and blah, blah, blah. And you know what Philly's got on their roster every single year at that point in time, it was just, you couldn't, uh, you couldn't avoid it. And you're out there just giving her. And I remember saying seven games, this is ridiculous. I just couldn't wait to find out if I was going to be playing in the big show that year and, uh, and get going with some real hockey games, but it's a grind, no doubt.
I don't know if you checked out that scrap from Sunday on Hockey Fights. My boy uh, Ben Harper on the New York Rangers pumped the wheels off AJ Greer last night. He was loving it. I texted him post game. I'm like, dude, you're in you're in mid season form already. <laughs> Good for him. Good Just for pumped him. Pumped his wheels. That's preseason, baby. Everyone's yeah. trying to do a little something to show what they got in the tank this year, and uh, that's what it's good for. But like I said, everyone's in a different boat. They are. Uh, so the Maple Leafs uh, see, are preseason home opener. Like, I can't even keep tabs on these things. It's a back-to-back. -back. They're playing Ottawa again. The Leafs are probably going to win. If you're betting on this stuff, you're a degenerate. Degenerate. I can't even say the word. Bertuzzi, Marner, Matthews, Reeves, Robertson, Klingberg, Jones, and Wool among the uh, expected relevant players we'll call them in the maple leafs lineup tonight again just avoid injury please work on some things i really don't care who wins <laughs> it's always weird when you're tr trying to avoid injury and then you get hurt. that seems to be when it happens <laughs> like you go full bore and just do your thing not think about it nothing happens but you know some of those guys some of those guys that have tried to avoid injury their entire lives are yeah. pussyfooting around in the corners and just kind of touching they're the ones that get themselves in weird positions and get hurt but I know. I know what you mean. You don't want guys to get hurt in some bullshit, nonsense, meaningless game where there's a bunch of other guys trying to do anything they can to stand out. But at the same time, you got to get them some reps and get them out there playing and, and see how they're feeling and get their, uh, you know, timing and, and everything else going at this point in the season. So it's an odd time of the season. I don't think anyone likes it, to be perfectly honest. I don't think the coaches love it. Yeah. I don't think the management loves it. And I don't think the players love it. But it's part of the process. You got to get through camp, got to get through preseason. And again, everyone's looking forward to that big day opening night is, uh, is the eyes on the prize right now. I'm curious to get your thoughts on some of the experimentation in camp, namely um austin matthews on the pk like at the double take looking at my notes and thinking about that and seeing the pictures on saturday of matthews and marner taking reps together on the pk again it's sorely in camp is this going to work out to fruition in the regular season i still think it's unlikely at least on a regular basis but what's your general thoughts on like a superstar i know mitch marner does it but i always view austin matthews in a different level like to me he's he's one of the best players on the planet period taking nothing away from McDavid, who is far and above everybody else, but he's in that conversation with like McKinnon, Dry Settle, my guys like that. You, you get what I'm saying. I'm just yeah. so cautious again talking about injury to put a player in that position where you take a shot off your your foot or your arm or you break something where you don't need to be out there. So I'm curious to get your opinion, being a former player in this league. That's right where my head goes to is broken feet, right? And yeah. I know guys are wearing the shot blockers this that and the other thing but those sticks and these players are shooting it so hard even with just a quick snapshot there, there's nothing to the skates anymore like nothing I mean I I took a shot my last year second last year off the outside of the foot and it just broke my foot in three places and it was yeah. just like your standard play and to think of Austin Matthews being put in that position multiple times every single game um you know, shot blocking is just a thing that's going to come with the PK. And I just don't think your, your rocket Richard winner is going to need, not that he won last year, but he, if a guy of that caliber is going to be need to be laying down, blocking shots, putting his feet out there. I mean, you break your foot. There's just nothing you can do, but take six weeks off and wait till the bone to heal. And I think that the PK is a good time for those guys to get a blow, get their win back. Um, you know, have a little reset. Yeah do your thing on the bench and get yourself ready to go out there because those guys ultimately need to log so many minutes and they should. And we're top end heavy, top six heavy. We want to roll those guys like crazy. If the going gets tough in the last bit of the third period, you want to be double shifting certain players. And if he's been, you know, rocking a regular shift plus the PK, I, I just, it's hard. I mean, isn't that what depth is about? Isn't that what some of those other bottom six guys are for is to lay down in front of shots and PK and, and be that defensive presence that can shut down and and you know stop their pp from night in night out and allow austin matthews to go do his thing seems like a little bit of overwork and it seems like a little bit of risk but we'll see if it comes to fruition or not so what's the what's the pro then like what what is the advantage of having matthews on the pk outside of having a ridiculous you know threat we'll call it on the pk if you get an odd man rush he's probably sniping if you're putting your if you're putting pk guys out there with the hopes of gaining offense, I think that's insane. I've never even heard of that, or I can't imagine anyone goes there. I, it can't be that. Um, if he PKs all year long, will he pick a couple pucks off at the point and go down on a breakaway? You bet he will. And he'll probably bury too, and that would be great. But I, I just, is he that good of a PKer where you you need him out there to shut down their PP? It just seems odd, right? He's yeah. It just seems odd. I mean, Mitch already does it, and 
you know, they're so good. They're going to be good at everything. I get it. I mean, them doing anything on an ice sheet, they're going to probably do it better than most anybody that you can find. I get yeah. that. But it just seems like a little bit of a, a position to put Austin Matthews on where he's kind of above that. Like he doesn't need to be, you know, boxing out and just laying in front of lanes and taking one time clappers anywhere near him to to blow up his foot like i said we'll see if it comes to it or not or if they're just testing out in preseason but it seems a little risky to have both those big boys on the, the pk and not to mention how much energy they're wasting out there as well very risky like the, the only way i see it maybe making a bit of sense is that if there's like 15 16 seconds left on a pk and you pop matthews out there because you know you're going to get back at even strength and you're going to go on yep. a bit of a rush here and somebody good's coming out of the box like it's it's got to be circumstantial if that makes sense and i get it's time for experimentation john klingberg Looks like he's getting the first crack at running the first power play unit. He was practicing on Saturday with the big boys. So Matthews, Tavares, Nylander, Marner. I honestly think this is the right decision for a variety of reasons. I think first and foremost, I think the Leafs have to find a way to get his confidence back to, you know, good order because last year was just demoralizing for the guy, whether it was Anaheim or Minnesota, he really, really fell out of favor, but it, it wasn't too long ago. He was, was one of the more elite power play quarterbacks in this league. And, I think if there's one guy to supersede, it's probably Morgan Riley because he's such a team first guy. It's not going to bother him from an ego standpoint either. Yeah, that's the first thing I thought is let's get this guy's mojo going, right? Yeah. He's capable and he's got that potential to get back there. He's shown that he's capable. It's it's more than potential. You've seen it before. He's proven he can do it. So get him on that point, Q being that thing with those studs. And all of a sudden, you know, maybe you have a little two game hiccup where you're not yeah. playing good. But guess what? You got two appetizers on the PP and all of a sudden you're not feeling too bad leaving the rink and just playing with those guys. Any touches you can get around those guys is going to lead to probably some sort of success. So get this guy's confidence back up high and try to try to channel that player that he used to be. And I always think it's insane when you bring a guy into Toronto and expect him to be like he was three years ago or the better form of himself or, or he comes off a contract year or a, a, a breakout year yeah. and it's his contract year. So the Leafs pick him up, pay him a shitload of money and say, be even better than that. In that year. That he just is that you? Well, yeah, like exactly. <laughs> it's like, that's an anomaly that he had and you expect him to add to that in Toronto. It's kind yeah. of like, it doesn't make sense, but get the guy going on the PP, get him everything you can give him every opportunity you can. There's already going to be the pressure. I mean, we're talking about it right now. As soon as he steps off the ice on that um, day, he's going to be have everyone waiting at his stall. Oh, what's it feel like to be playing with these guys? What's it play like to play? Is there pressure? But they're just going to hammer him, right? And that's yeah. like welcome to Toronto. But you got to be a professional, and all you can do is put him in the situations to have success. They're obviously doing that. The PP looks deadly, and I don't think Morgan Riley um, is going to be a guy who's going to go down and you know get get his time on the. On the second unit, obviously, that first unit is going to eat up the majority of it. But I think he gets it. And I think Morgan Riley is also kind of also on the camp of, like, we got to go do something in the playoffs as well. And he's yeah. probably not as hung up on it, understands he got to get Klinger going here. Man, and the fascinating thing to me about last year, and the power play is always, like, top five in the league, especially under, you know, what they have and have had for the last six, seven years. But the fact that Riley had just a dreadful regular season and still they had the second best power play in the NHL, Tells me at least that he's interchangeable. And I don't mind the look of a right-handed shooting guy on the back end. Like this is very similar to Tyson Berry. But the thing is when Berry came to town, Mike Babcock was the coach and he was so stubborn, surprise, surprise. And he felt that Morgan Riley was the guy and, and didn't want to deviate from that. But like the, my biggest takeaway is that they're playing to Klingberg's strengths. Like they're not bringing him in to play defense. They brought him in to move the puck. They brought him in to run a power play. They brought him in to be offensive. So they're going to put him in a role to succeed, which makes a lot of sense to me. Yeah, for sure. There's there's nothing worse than bringing a guy in and telling him to do something that he's not built yeah. to do. And, and they're smarter than that. And, you know, we've talked about it on this show before. Sheldon Keefe is not scared to jumble around and try new things and not that putting Klingberg on the <laughs> quarterback in a PP is a new thing, yeah. but he's going to try that out. He's going to, he's going to try multiple looks at it. He's definitely not scared. Again, my issue is doing that shit two weeks before the playoffs, but right now is the time to experiment with everything, get everyone some looks, see if anything just it's weird with lineups and with players and with guys, 
you put them together and it's just like, what is with that? They're just clicking. It just yeah. works. Every time they go out there, something happens. They come to the bench and they're just talking, talking, chattering. Oh, dude, and they're just clicking and firing on all cylinders. Yeah. It's it's beautiful to watch. And this is the time to go out there and throw something against the wall, see what sticks, and then you can figure out where you're headed into the into the regular season. So it just it's just a good time to be doing that stuff. Do anything right now. You're not going to bother me. I think now is the time. It's sort of like when me and you press the record button and we do a show. It is seamless most of the time. Throwing shit against the wall, seeing what sticks. <laughs> Pretty much. Speaking of which, uh, you deserve a lot of credit for your Buffalo Bills pick from last week when we did the show on Friday. So we're going to piggyback off that with the Botano wrap-up presented by Botano.ca. The game starts now 19+. plus. Please play responsibly. There's two Monday nighters. I don't watch football. Why, why are there two Monday nighters all of a sudden? I'm not a football guru, man. I'm not really sure. I was wondering that myself last week, but um, Fair. Fair. couldn't tell you. Couldn't tell you. It is different. Look, it's a different look. And uh, yeah, the Bills took it down. I didn't think the commanders were as good as they were looking at 2-0. and Josh Allen was going to come take control, and he did. He smashed them. So good for Jay. Today, I'm going with Tampa Bay. They're playing Philly. I know Jalen Hurts is a stud. But if you take Tampa Bay, they got a wicked defense. They're at plus six. You're going to force Philly to win them or to beat them by a touchdown. Leaning on Tampa's defense today. We're taking Tampa at plus six. Okay, you sold me. I mean, Tampa. for for all my 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 football knowledge, I'm either getting it from you or a Taylor Swift fan page. So I'm going to go with you. Hmm. I wish <laughs> TB12 was still on the box, man. It would erase huh. all this. All this Taylor Swift bullshit right now. We'd be focused on Tom Brady right now. I miss him so much. Like, I know we're talking about it now, but like social media the last 24 hours. Oh, my goodness. Taylor Swift and, and Jason. Is it Jason Kelsey? Travis. Travis. Why do I think Jason? Oh, that's the brother. That's the brother who's got the podcast with the wife. Sorry. I'm, I don't know anything about football. I see this stuff and they're getting. Sound like you know these decent amount i watch highlights you know that i'm a highlight watcher uh but mm. yeah it was a fun weekend in general again lots cooking in the sports world and we're a week away so this week or this time next monday as we record this we'll be doing our show our live show 45 minutes each uh monday to friday can't wait for that at the leafs nation 401 where you can subscribe here on youtube if you're not doing so already just search leafs morning take wherever you find your podcast as well that's jay rosehill i'm nick alberga we'll talk later this week take care Hold up. We should ask the crowd if anyone likes golf out there. The Ryder Cup's going okay. up. Throw in the chat there if you guys uh, want to get some uh, Botano golf bet, golf chat going on with the Ryder Cup, because I wouldn't mind ponying on some of that stuff right there. I could get into that. Rosie, you have the freedom. Play. You have the freedom to do whatever you want on the really? Botano wrap up because there's no hockey right now. I'm not betting on preseason hockey. I don't think people want to bet on preseason hockey. Feels good. Feels good. Well, it's coming up here. We'll take a look. Let us know what you guys think. Yes, please let us know in the comments section here on YouTube. Again, that's Jay Rosal. I'm Nick Alberga. Peace out.